On today's Smart Robots review, we are continuing our adventure building our very own Smart Robot car. Today is part four. In part one and two, we assembled it. In part three, we downloaded code and made it work. Now we're going to make it Bluetooth capable and control it with our phone. All right, stay with me. Let's do this. Welcome to Smart Robots Review. Everyone, welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world. I'm your host Elias and it's great to have you here as always. Today is part four of our adventure building our very own smart robotic car. In parts one and two we assembled it, in part three we learned more about the programming environment and we downloaded code to make it move. In part four, today's part, we're going to install the Bluetooth module and then make it Bluetooth capable so we can remote control it using our phone. Pretty cool. Why go out there and buy a normal remote control car when you can build your very own with sensors like ultrasonic, like Bluetooth connectivity, line tracking, the sky is the limit with what you can make with this car, this robotic car that you can download code and make it do your bidding. <laughs> But first, I want to thank all my sponsors, and that is you. If you notice in the description down below, there are links leading to Amazon. And if you click those links and you do make any purchases on Amazon, from a robotics kit to even a toothbrush, I get a very small commission, which goes a long way to helping me make more videos like this. Because sometimes a vendor will send me a robot or a kit, but other times I have to try and get them myself, which as you can imagine, it can get pretty expensive. So thank you so much for everybody who has helped me out so far. And if you're interested in more products, check out those links below. And now let's resume with the episode. First and foremost in our parts list today is the smart robotic car that we have assembled so far today. The included Bluetooth module, a smartphone and the USB cable that uh, came with the kit that you're going to use to connect to your computer and download the code. Okay, so here we're looking at the Bluetooth module. This module must not be connected until we download the code. So let's download the code first, and then we're gonna be connecting it. Start up your ID, your integrated development environment, load the Bluetooth underscore car sketch. This is the code we're gonna to need to upload, and let's do that now, to the smart robotic car. Connect the smart robotic car to your computer download the code by clicking the arrow button. Now, if you guys missed part three of this series, I recommend going back and reviewing that if you're new to this uh, environment, to Arduino, to coding, that will give you a kind of high level overview of how you can connect the car and download the code. All right, now that we have downloaded the code, Next, we want to take the Bluetooth module that came with the kit. This is the Bluetooth module. And we're going to be plugging it in to the Bluetooth socket on the bottom right of your screen. As you can see, I'm looking from the top. This is the expansion board attached to the Arduino board. If you missed episodes one and two, check them out because that's when we assembled the kit. Anyway, you take the Bluetooth module and you attach it just like that. Very little force is required. Then flip on the power switch and let's move on to the next step. Okay, head on to your Google Android store or your Apple App Store and download the Elegoo BLE tool. This is the application we're going to be configuring to connect and control our smart robotic car. All right, let's start the application and make sure that the robotic car is turned on and that the Bluetooth on your phone is also enabled. Take a look in the middle of the top of your application. It says no connection and that's very important. That means the application is not connected to any Bluetooth device. Then we're gonna go ahead and set up a Bluetooth connection. We're gonna click on the gear here and then find the device, that's HC-08 is what you're looking for. So make sure when you find that, click it and select it. 
And as you can see on the very top now, it does say HC-08, which means we are connected to the smart robot car. And this is what you're going to see the next time you start the application. So let's move on by clicking on the keyboard button on the very top right. And look at this. It looks like we have a blank template to work with. Each one of these white box is going to be a button. So let's configure each button and why not start with the forward button. So the very first button here we're going to enter the label and that is what the button is going to say when you press it and when the button is unpressed. So we're entering the forward word as a label when the button is unpressed. Then we're going to enter character F. I'll explain that in a minute. Then we're going to enter another character, another label forward. This is when the button is pressed and another character and this time it's the same character, character F. So what's happening here? When you are, when the button is unpressed, it's going to say forward. When the button is pressed, the button is also going to say forward again, but it is going to send the character F to the robot car, to the microcontroller, and the microcontroller is going to make a decision based on what we instructed the microcontroller to do in the program, in the sketch, when a character, for example in this case, F is received. All right, while I'm talking, I'm going to continue creating the rest of the buttons. And here, we are doing the same thing for the button stop. So, we're entering a label for when the button is unpressed, the but when the button is pressed, and then we're entering another uh, a character, in this case it's an S. So we're going to be sending the character S when we're pressing the button to the smart robot car and that smart robot car is going to make a decision. In this case, it's going to stop. It's going to stop giving power to the motor, which is, which of course the motors are connected to the wheels and the wheels will effectively stop. All right, so I'm being over simplistic here, but I want to make sure again that we are building some confidence. We don't want this to be too complicated off the bat. Electronics can be so much fun and the sky is the limit. I know I've said this before, but the sky is the limit of what you can do and what you can build. And it starts with some basic knowledge. So we're building that basic knowledge right now. So we created a forward, a stop, and a back button. And we're going to continue doing the left and the right. Now, one other thing that you should know. We are... I'm capitalizing the left here uh, when the button's unpressed and when the button's pressed. And you should know that the character though, the character is cap sensitive. So I have to make sure that it is a lower L. It, as you notice, the forward was a lower F character. And same thing for the stop and same thing for the back. And that's very important because the program right now is the sketch. In, in our case, the sketch is configured to expect a lowercase character. So when we're pressing the right button, it's going to expect the lowercase r. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I created one more button called light. I will explain that in just a minute. But look at this. Let's step back and take a gander at this. This is our app. And we created this. We designed this joystick of sorts that we're going to use to control the robot car. Okay, so to try it out, make sure the car is turned on, connected to your app, and here we go. I'm using the car remotely using the Bluetooth app. Connected via Bluetooth, and it is receiving real-time commands, and executing them as I instructed to. So this is great. I mean, we take, get, take this type of functionality for granted when we buy a product, but here you're getting to see something that you built on your own. That given we are using a kit that provides all the tools and parts necessary to do so, but you're getting to see something that you built. And it is foundational information. It is something that we can build on and learn from. Did you see that? <laughs> There's so much torque it, under the under the hood here for this smart robot car. All right, so let's move on and take a look. Let's go back to the application and see what feedback we're receiving when we're using it. All right, so here's the app. As I press the buttons and I send a, send a command to the robot car, that information is being echoed in the chat uh, window which you can use to actually type a command to send to the robot also. So instead of pressing the button, 
forward, for example, you can type F for forward or S for stop, and that command is being sent to the microcontroller and it will behave accordingly. Also, we did create a light button, uh, L-I-G-H-T, so that sends a signal to the controller to light a specific LED on the Arduino, and that's just another example of sending a command and the controller, or the smart robot car in this case, responding accordingly. So there you have it. Now we have our smart robot car, Bluetooth connected and controlled, pretty cool. Now all that is left is to configure the line tracking module here and the ultrasonic sensor. On the next series, we're gonna be exploring those sensors. So that's great. Make sure you check out those episodes when they come out and make sure you leave your feedback down below. Let me know what you thought about today's episode. The opinion that matters the most is your opinion. So if you like the episode, make sure you click the check button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show, to the channel. That helps me out tremendously. I appreciate that. Check out the Amazon links below. And until next time, thank you for watching Smart Robots Review.